Hey everybody, it's Wigaholic. Uh, I wanted to jump on here, um, do a quick explanation as to why I will not use PayPal anymore. Um, I will not purchase any items from a company um, directly using PayPal. Um, I'll just get into the details and explain to you a little bit why. First of all, if you are purchasing directly through PayPal, you need to be cognizant that they are making money on your purchase. They are getting fees from the seller, and especially if it's a large dollar amount like it was in my case here, they're getting a pretty good percentage. Um, they don't want to give that money up. So that right there should be a red flag to you. Um, if you're purchasing through eBay, you have that buyer protection which precedes PayPal and their discretion. eBay is going to be on the side of the buyer. Um, if it's not as described, you're more than likely gonna win. If it's item not received through eBay, you're gonna win. The only possible way um, typically to win through PayPal um, if you're purchasing is if it's item not received. Plain and simple. Um, in the area of wigs, they do not cover custom wigs by any means. So you could go to this company and you can give them all the specifics of what you want to purchase and you can get something totally opposite in the mail and you are not covered, period. That's it. All they have to do is put custom on that invoice and you have lost your case before you even pay that bill. Right there. It's in the bylaws. Um, the other thing is um, they have the discretion as to what they read, um, what information you have given them that they decide that they're even going to look at. They will not look at videos. They will not look at half of the stuff you give them because their goal is not to give you your money back. They want to keep that money with the seller and their percentage of it. Make sense? The only way you might have some kind of protection is if you've used your credit card. If you've used your credit card, I suggest highly that you go through your credit card company to dispute issues. Find out what their regulations are, find out what they cover, and use that because you have more protection from them than you do from PayPal. I will give you my brief synopsis of what happened, which will um, kind of help you see how it all works. So I purchased an item from someone who was doing a live sale. Um, in the live sale, they showed the front of the wig, did not show the cap. Uh, when I inquired about the item, they sent me a picture of a different wig cap and said, yours will be just like this. Uh, I was told in the video, the live that I watched, that it was transparent lace. When I got it, it was brown. Um, there were several issues with inconsistent coloring in it. it the invoice said that it was, um, the wefts were 100% um, virgin raw hair, but yet the hair that was used to make the wig itself was bleached on the wefts already before it even went in, which right there is a discrepancy. It's not um, what the invoice stated. <coughs> Excuse me. It was a stock piece. So by technicality, it didn't come under that law for a custom wig. However, the seller put in there, it was a customizable color, so they threw that custom word in there, um, which it wasn't. It was a stock piece, and I had nothing extra done to it. So I purchased it. I received it. Um, there were issues with it. I went to the seller several times, discussed these issues with them, got blown off, um, and decided to go ahead and file a case with PayPal. So I filed the case. I give them um, the video from the purchase where it says it's transparent lace um, and that it's a stock piece. I give them screenshots of the cap that I'm told I'm gonna get and screenshots of the cap I get. I give them pictures of all of the issues showing on the wig where I can't use it, 
um, because these issues would be very visible. Uh, this was not a cheap purchase. This was a purchase close to $600. And I gave them pictures of the coloring job. I gave them letters from um, other wig companies stating that this was not uh, quality work and it was not by any means a, a good piece and that the information, I gave them all the information telling them what was disclosed and what wasn't disclosed about this piece. And they got information as well from the seller uh, with all of the information I gave them, the video links, the photos, the letters from other wig companies, they decided on behalf of the seller. Their um, bylaws in there strictly state that they have the discretion to review what they want to review and what they don't. And that the only thing I think that the buyers have to do, which they did not do, um, sorry, sellers have to, to do, which they did not do, um, that their return policy has to be published. And I have looked on the company's website as well as it was not published. It was not published on their website anywhere that they have um, a return policy or what that return policy is. Uh, they also didn't publish it anywhere on the sale that was on Facebook. There was nowhere um, either verbally or in writing what their return policy was. Um, so that law was broken, but yet they still did not do the return or authorize the um, return for the claim in my name. Or they did not give me the decision in the dispute for me to get my money back. And is that the end? Well, no, you can do other things in areas like this. You can file with the Federal Trade Commission. You can file a complaint with them against PayPal and or your buyer. You can file with Consumer Affairs. You can file with the Better Business Bureau. You can file with all three of these agencies and let them know what's going on. You can provide them with the photos. You can provide them with the information that PayPal got. You can provide them with everything. And that is your recourse, is to go out there, contact these agencies, and let them know what PayPal's doing. They're in the business of making money. And if they can keep your money, then they've made it. Um, they don't govern themselves for buyer protection. And it's pretty evident through this case um, that I've learned that. You can go on to YouTube. Uh, there's several videos about um, how sellers will win, what they will win, and what they won't win. There's one gentleman who sold for many, many years, thousands of dollars, and he told you straight out, if you're a seller and you sell on eBay, you're going to lose for item not described. You're going to lose for item not received. You will um, win for item not described on PayPal. You will lose for item not received. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is a gentleman who has done this for years. He knows what he's doing. Excuse me, I got that scratch in my throat. He knows what he's doing and he knows the system. <clears throat> With that being said, the cards are stacked against us, so I won't be purchasing through PayPal anymore. Um, I will only purchase using my credit card where I have some kind of, <clears throat> <clears throat> excuse me, I will only purchase through PayPal. So, that being said, I will no longer purchase through. <clears throat> so, with all of this information, it has led me to the conclusion 
that I will not use PayPal again for any of my purchases on any of my wigs, etc. Um, will I purchase through eBay using them? Possibly. Um, there again, you do have the option to purchase directly with your credit card. And you have more protection with your credit card and with eBay than you have with PayPal. Uh, PayPal has shown me that the truth doesn't always prevail with them. Um, they look out for themselves. They look out for these sellers because that's where they're making their money. Um, they don't make money from the buyers. They're not taking a percentage um, from them for making the purchase. And it's sad. I'm going to share this wherever I can share it. I ask you to do the same. I don't want anybody else to be taken advantage of by a, um, a bad purchase or by PayPal. The videos on PayPal that um, show issues on how to win, etc., they're geared towards the buyers, or not the buyers, excuse me. They're geared towards the sellers, not the buyers. And it's unfortunate in this day and age that a company like PayPal is shafting buyers, for lack of a better term, and the sellers know it. These sellers know, especially with something like wigs, if they throw custom in there, that you're not going to win. They know it. Um, if they um, if they get the item to you, you're basically screwed. Your only chance is to have it not get there at all. And then you have item not received. Or have it not be delivered in the time frame. Um, are there people who abuse that towards sellers? Yes. I've heard of several instances of sellers um, approving the item in writing or looking at the video of the item and saying it's great. And then as soon as they know it's shipped, they file as item not received. That is wrong. That is abusing the system when you're filing and the item is already shipped. That is abusing. So there are bads on both sides. But I'm finding now that I am more selective with the companies I'm going to purchase from. I will know their return policies. They will be published before I purchase from them again. I will make payment directly to them, not through PayPal. And I will know their integrity because, to be honest, a lot of these sellers don't have integrity and um, apparently neither does PayPal. So, y'all, um, like and share this again. If you're new to the channel, please hit that little button, uh, subscribe, ring that bell, smack that bell, do whatever you want to do with that bell so that you can be alerted to things like this. Um, I am focused on helping ladies in uh, hard times that, uh, you know, it's already hard enough to deal with, with hair loss. And for PayPal to assist um, Sellers in dishonest tactics just adds more stress, more financial burden to those of us trying to deal with these kind of issues. So until next time, this is Wigaholic. Um, find a new way to purchase. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.